And then, of course, in your life. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art Space on Facebook Live. My name is Nikki, and I am one of the artists at Art Space Chicago um, in Logan Square at Armitage. And today we're going to be doing a paint and sip live with Cats and Goldfish by Matisse. So um, let me talk to you a little bit about the supplies you're going to need for this painting. Um, I've got a little cheat sheet for you. Mm. So uh, first thing you're going to need is a water cup for rinsing your brushes. We're gonna be dipping in and out of different colors of paint. And so you're definitely going to need um, at least one cup, if not two. I know a lot of people that after their rinse water gets a little dingy, they get nervous that it's gonna taint their colors. So you might wanna have an extra on the side. Um, you're going to need a minimum of two paint brushes. So I have two kinds of paint brushes here. One is a taper paint brush, which comes to a nice point. That's gonna be for some of our fine detail work. The other one is a flat edge. So I call this skinny one, I call this Callista Flockhart because she's very skinny. And this one I call Kid and Play because it's got a flat top like Kid and Play. Um, I might be dating myself, but what's nice about the flat edge is that we can do some broad strokes here, but then also when we turn it sideways, it can also be used for some detail lines. So those are the two brushes I use. If yours is a little bit wider or a little bit skinnier, that's okay. We can work through that as well. We are going to, so you will also need a surface on which to mix your paints. A lot of times I just use a paper plate, like something from the party bin. You know how you get like stacks of plates. Um, you can also use just like a plastic lid or um, if you just have a glass plate, the paints will come off of glass. We're using acrylic paints today. So it will come off glass in the dishwasher with a little hot water and soap. Acrylic paints do not come out of fabric very well. So if you get it on your clothes, make sure you wash that off right away. Um, what you will also need is a pencil. We're going to be sketching and make sure you have a pretty decent eraser so that if you do make some stray marks, you can erase them. Um, the next thing you'll need is any kind of a beverage. Um, I am going to be drinking gin and tonic because I love my gin and tonic, um, but a glass of wine or non-alcoholic beverage if that's what you would like. Um, we are also going to be using six paints. I know it says five paints there, but I added a couple. Um, so we're pretty much doing primary colors today. Matisse worked a lot with primary colors and color block. So we have red and yellow. We are gonna be mixing some orange in there. Um, so I left a little gap here. Greens and blues, and then black and white for changing our tints. So we have these six colors. And then I always have a paper towel nearby uh, for cleaning off my brushes or getting some of that excess water off of the brushes uh, when we're painting. So. This canvas is really big. I, I brought this canvas in um, to do a big display, but actually the painting that we're going to be doing is on a nine by 12 canvas. I already started sketching um, to kind of have a baseline with us. So, but any rectangular canvas is fine, whether it's nine by 12, or I think this is 14 by 11. Um, hi, Bill, thanks for coming in. Thanks for joining us. So as you can see, this is like a really fun, bright painting that Matisse did. Um, it's actually got one of his personal cats. He had two cats um, and they show up a lot in his painting. Um, so without further ado, let's take it away. So I'm gonna take down my big canvas and put up my little guy and then just kind of zoom in with you. So we get a nice close angle here. There we go. Don't wanna to have too much shadow with you. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of go over some of these pencil lines that I started uh, so you can kind of follow along. So we're going to be working in thirds on this canvas. So I started with just some basic lines here, a third of the page and a third of the page here. And then we're going to have a third of the page here and the third of the page here. So let's start just kind of by putting those little marks right here. Hi, Lizzie, and hi, Anna, and 
Darren. Hi, Darren. Thanks for joining us today. So I'm just starting by making these little hashtags about a third. I'm not really measuring. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but usually just breaking it into thirds. Um, we're also going to do kind of the intersection in the center. So we have a couple. Let me actually bring this back. We have a couple major um, points in here. So the main character, of course, is the cat and the cat and the little bowl of fish. So that's in the center of our painting. But we also have this quadrant here, or this third, which is the window. And then the rest of the two thirds is kind of basically reds and oranges. So we're gonna focus on kind of getting some of these lines and then creating this character in the middle. So let me show you how that's gonna look. Now, I don't have a straight edge or a ruler. If you're one of those people that's like, I really need my lines to be straight, you could use the side of a notebook or a piece of paper, but I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. So I'm gonna go from about a uh, little left of center here and just draw straight down. Da -da -da -da. And then from a third over. And that's gonna be my window. So you see this line here and this line here, that's my window. Now, in the top third here, we're gonna have a horizon line that goes across that window. Now on this third line, this is the edge of the shutter. So there's a shutter or a window, um, I guess that's a window, window frame shutter that comes here. So this goes down from a third and you can kind of lightly run it all the way down and it would just continue out from there. But since this is all behind the cat, I'm just kind of doing that very lightly. So basically we've got this window and let's see, the wall, where the wall meets the floor, this is about a quarter. So if this is half, about a quarter of the way, we'll draw another line and that's gonna be the floor. Okay? So those are some of the big major lines that we have. Hi, Jerry, hi, Rachel, thanks for coming in. Thanks for joining us. Um, so now let's get our main characters mapped out. So we have this jar of fish. The jar of fish starts at the center point of the canvas, right? So if we were figuring where's the center line, okay, here's about the center line. So right here is about the center of my canvas. So I'm gonna kind of make my top oval of my glass jar right around that center point. I'm going a little bit into the window and a little bit into the shutter but that's about how wide my jar is. And then the base of my jar of fish is going to go right around that wall line. So right here. And then the sides of the bowl, we just kind of connect like that. So now we have our jar of fish. Now the cat is a really fun shape because you know it's kind of leaning and reaching, trying to get those goldfish. So we're gonna start from the top rim here and we're gonna kind of do this parentheses sort of shape. And that kind of circles around I don't even know what I would call it. It's almost like a jelly bean. This is like a jelly bean cat, big yellow jelly bean cat. And we stop right about here, which is just a little bit over from the shutter line. And then we're gonna go straight down almost to the bottom of this jar. Hi, Evelyn. Oh, hi, Evelyn and Susanna. Thanks for joining us. And from the bottom of that leg, we're gonna do a little cat foot. Boop, just a little cat foot and then his foot kind of comes up like that. So this is really like where the cat's leaning, trying to reach in there. And then from there, we've got this little paw that's dipping in, dipping in there. I think I'm gonna smooth this corner out. That's a little too, just gonna bring this in like that. 
okay? So now we've got these kind of basic shapes. We've got the window, we've got the jar, we've got the cat, we've got the frame of the window there, and we've got our little horizon here and a horizon there. Oh, look at Trevor, thank you for joining. That's my hubby, thanks Trevor. Um, so we've got our jar here. Now the jar, the glass jar of fish is sitting on top of a stool, which is just going to be like an oval that comes down like this. Now we do want the cat to be standing on this stool, so make sure your stool includes that cat foot. All right? And that's really all the shapes we need to work on. Oh, hi, Jenna. Thanks for joining us. All right, so we have this stool and it's a three-legged stool. So I've just got like three stick legs coming out from the bottom. All right, and that's our basic shape of our cat and jar and window. So um, let's talk about putting paint on the canvas. Now, when you start painting the canvas, something I always tell my students is do not neglect the edges of the canvas because you want when you walk by your painting, you don't want to see this, these little gaps. And you want to see what the worst is when you forget a whole section. So make sure when you're putting paint on your canvas, you're not neglecting the edges here or else it just looks terrible when you walk by. Unless you're going to frame it and then it doesn't really matter. But who has that kind of, who has frame money nowadays? Nobody's got that kind of money. What are we, crazy? Might as well be painting with gold leaf. Ooh, that would be fun, but we're not gonna do that. Okay, you ready to put some paint on this canvas? Here we go, kids. Oh, that's very shocking. Stay. Okay, so now we're gonna put some paint on the canvas. Now, the majority of this painting is red. So we're gonna see red all here and all here. And then the, the shutters here are, we're gonna be doing mainly red with a little bit of yellow mixed in to create that orange. This is like a dark orange. This is a light orange. This is almost a yellowy orange that creates the frame here. So it's all gonna be reds and oranges. So that's gonna be the majority of our painting. Okay, so let's get started. Very exciting. My favorite thing is the first moment you put paint on the canvas. It's like, here we go. It's all coming together now. So you always want your paint brushes to have a little moisture in them, but not to the point where they're dripping. So I'm just gonna kind of dry off here. Stay. Okay, here we go everyone. Are you excited? I'm so excited. We're putting paint on the canvas. Oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Look at that gorgeous red. So depending upon which kind of acrylics you purchase, they could be really rich or they might be a little thinner or runnier. Susan Yates is here. Hi, girl. Oh my gosh, good to see you. Well, not see you, but see your name pop up. Thanks for joining us. Do you know Miss Yates? Elizabeth is here. She says hi. Oh my gosh, teacher friends joining us. Hi. Okay, so we're getting red put on here. So we're gonna create a lot of reds. So I start with just kind of doing a line around my stool. It's not a stool sample, just a stool. <laughs> Stop it. Okay, so that's my red. And I'm just kind of outlining some of the pieces here just to get all this red on here. Now. There is a, a bouquet of flowers that kind of comes over here, so I am gonna leave this corner kind of whitish. Whitish? Sure, we'll say that. <gasps> TJ's here, hi TJ, thanks for joining us. I'm sure that Kim's with you, welcome, welcome. So we're gonna get a lot of red on here. So we're going all the way around this painting with our red. Oh, there it goes. There goes my paper towel. So down here where I had the legs of my stool, I am kind of gonna just give myself a little bit of a line of red just to remind myself to color that in. All right. So make sure, like I said, you're going all the way around the side of your canvas. Now, some of you might be doing sketch pad and watercolors. You can pretty much do this with anything because he used such bright, vibrant, 
Crayola like colors. You can do this with crayons, colored pencils, markers, Sharpies, anything you like. He's super awesome. Matisse, I, I did a lot of reading up on Matisse um, while I was starting this painting. And he was such an interesting guy. And most of his painting, most of his life, he was stuck in a bed because he was sick. And like he was going to be a lawyer. He wasn't even going to be a painter. Matisse was like, Going to law school, he came from a wealthy family and then he got appendicitis when he was like 20. And he was stuck in bed for two years, bedridden for two years. And so to like keep him busy while he was in bed, his mom bought him a bunch of paints and made some comment like, make sure you capture the emotion, not just the color. Cause he did a lot of still life and they were very blah. And then she's like, your paintings have no emotion. So after two years of painting in bed, he's like, I think I like doing this better than studying law. So much of the chagrin of his parents, he's like, I'm gonna be a painter. Very much the same way when my parents were expecting me to be a lawyer and I'm like, I'm gonna be a teacher. And they're like, oh. <laughs> but it all works out in the end, right? We all follow our passion and we all live happily ever after, right? Right, that's how it goes. <laughs> I'm here, it'll be just fine. So anyway, he didn't become a lawyer, he became a painter. But he wasn't like fabuloso painter. He was just kind of this guy who liked to paint. And so he tried to go to art school, but he got turned down like three times. They wouldn't let him in. They were like, you don't have any talent. And so he started, he started just like walking around the art campus carrying his paintings in a portfolio and literally bumping into professors and tutors and then he'd like drop his paintings on the ground and be like oh excuse me until finally one of the tutors is like hey this is good stuff you should come to one of our classes and then I think he started doing that when he was like 21 or 22 and it wasn't until he was like 26 that they finally accepted him into an art program and then the rest is kind of history. He learned painting and... But then like, he wasn't very healthy. He like was a sickly kind of guy. He was, he was bedridden for like another 10 years of his life later on because of cancer. And so a lot of his art was just like, you're stuck in bed, go make art. Okay, so you're gonna notice, I do see a little bit of my pencil coming through and maybe I made that a little bit too dark but that's okay, I can go over it with the second coat and you won't really see it. But I am making sure I'm getting all of the edges of my painting covered in red. There we go. Beauteous, wonderful. We bled all over our painting, so red. I see a door and I want to paint it black. But we're not painting it black, we're painting it red. Okay, so now, since we've got our red started, now we're gonna start creating some orange hues, okay? So, now I've got this like little extra tray right here. I'm gonna take some red, throw it in there, and then I know I have red on my brush. Don't cringe, I know it's a bit of a trigger seeing beautiful things tainted with another color. Ooh, there's a little red in my yellow. And now I'm gonna mix my beautiful red and yellow and make this lovely orange. Now, depending upon how much red you put in there or how much yellow, you're gonna get different shades of orange. Ta -ta -ta -ta. So this is kind of a very red orange. Let me just see how that looks. I want it a little more yellow. It's not perfect yet. We must make the mixings, and we make the mixing so we have a nice orange, yeah? That's a sehr schön, yeah? It's pretty, yeah? I like it. Okay, so we're gonna do the shutter. Shutter, oh! <laughs> With this nice orange color. I'm gonna make it a little bit more yellow. I know you think I'm nuts, but I'm not nuts, I promise. I know what I'm doing. <gasps> I just want it to be nice and bright. Somebody turn off their phone. Oh wait, that's me. La 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 la. So we've got this lovely orange happening here. Now I am going right up to my red 
we are going to be going back and making some outlines with black later on. So we are going to have some different coloring. Ooh, right up to the edge of my cat. Hello, kitty. Hello, kitty. Oh, <laughs> so here we go. That beautiful color of orange right there to contrast with our red and it's going to look really cool up against our yellow cat. Now, this is also going to show up kind of down here. So right between where the cat leg is and the jar of jar of fish. We want to see that as well. And we're going to see maybe just a little bit of it over here. So I get that. Oh, Pam! In Australia? You're coming all the way from Australia? Girl, what time is this there? Mm-mm. I would be asleep. Thank you for joining us all the way from Australia. You're super rocking awesome. I love you. All right. Oh, look what I just did. I just realized that I should have had a little bit of red there. That's okay. I'm going to go back in and just touch that up. Ooh. Look at me forgetting things. All right. So I really got to rinse off this paintbrush. Now, whenever you give your paintbrush a drink, you got to give yourself a drink. You got to, you got to calm down too. Mm-hmm. Got a little sip, a little sip a rooney a little thirst quenching. <sighs> Look at how pretty that is already. Should we just stop now and call it art? No, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna make it crazy fun and beautiful. So I really wanna rinse, rinse, rinse. Rinse a rooney nice and clean. Dry it off on a paper towel. Paper towels are arguing with me. All right, so you can kind of see when it gets clean, you're gonna first get some orange and some red on there. Because now, what's the next thing I wanna do? I think I wanna go with some yellow. Let's get some yellow up in here. So I don't like to just put straight up yellow. Well, you know, I might put straight up yellow and then we'll blend it a little bit later. Because we love this cat. Meow, 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 meow. I've been watching a lot of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood with my son because I'm living vicariously through my son's childhood again. Um, and there's that one cat. I don't remember what her name is. She's always like, meow, 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 and then meow. And at first you're like, that's adorable. And then you're like, shut up. I'm sick of the meow, meows. All right, here we go. Look at how fun that is. I love seeing the color blocks here. He was he actually didn't do color block until about halfway through his career. And he went to Morocco. This is Matisse I'm talking about, not my meow meow and not Mr. Rogers. So he went to Morocco and he started seeing all these beautiful, vibrant colors in his surroundings. Oh, look, you see, this is, I love when I make a mistake because it's a teachable moment. Teachable moment. I picked up some red. I don't know if you can see that. Dog tail. Um, I picked up some red in my yellow. It's okay. We're just going to blend it away. I'm going to wipe off my paintbrush to get the rest of that red off of there. You can actually see it shows up on there. And then I'm just going to kind of blend what I put on there. So you can't see it anymore and then go over it with more yellow. If you're really freaked out, just channel Bob Ross. Just, there's no mistakes. There's just happy little accidents. Maybe you've got a tabby cat. Maybe you've got a calico cat that's got little red stripes in it. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's just a painting. It's just art. Stacy, thank you so much for joining us. So glad you guys all came to party. Okay. So my kitty cat is coming around here. 
Now, we are not going into the jar with the cat except for his one paw. So we're just gonna kind of go around like this. We will be doing a little bit of the cat in the background there, but it's gonna be a little bit darker. So we're gonna start with this yellow and he's gonna go into, look at him trying to catch those fish. Ooh, fishy fish, such a curious little fish. And he went wherever I did go. Monty Python, anyone? Anyone into the Monty Python? Oh, fishy fish. Such a curious little fish. Okay, stop it. All right, so here's a cat foot. Everyone likes a cat foot in a painting. Look at that cat foot. Never seen a more perfect cat foot. All right, it's such an awkward stance for a cat to have leaning and fishing as one would do if thou wast a cat. All right, so you did notice that I kind of left the jar open. We are gonna be going back in and painting that with a little bit of a, a yellowish orange. Gerg. There we go. So we're gonna give our paintbrush a little drink. We're gonna give ourselves a little drink. And we're gonna get into some greens here. Cause who doesn't love a little green? But we gotta get all that red and yellow and orange off of our paintbrush. Get it nice and clean. So I have straight up green, like Crayola green. It's called grass green, it's just green. But the green we wanna make is kind of a yellowy green. So very much the way we did our orange. <gasps> dad! <laughs> My dad came. Thomas Shields, hello. Welcome to Art Space Facebook. So glad you could join us. So we don't just want a straight up green. We actually want to make this kind of lovely yellowy green. So just like we did with the orange, we're going to mix two colors and we're going to make this lovely kind of sea green. I don't know if I could show you that. So just a nice glop of yellow and a nice glop of green, and it makes this lovely kind of sea foamy, not sea foam, but like, hmm, spring green. Let's call this a spring green, shall we? And once I get it on here, you'll kind of see what I'm saying. Oh, isn't that pretty? Look at that. Now, okay, let me tell you how I'm gonna go do this. We're going to go on the underside of that oval, so we did like this oval to show the level of the water. We're gonna go under that here. Oh, what's really fun is my green is kind of changing as I paint it. All right, now you wanna have three fish in this jar. So if you wanna just eyeball it, you can eyeball it. If you're like, I wanna know where they are, I'm gonna pencil it in, you could pencil it in. You want three of them. So you want one kind of like on the bottom and then one kind of going towards the top like that. It's almost look like a, a wrestler, Mexican wrestler mask. Like it? So we want to kind of go around the fish, leave their bellies white. We are going to come back with a nice darkish red orange in there. I'm give myself a headband. There we go. Okay, so we've got this right here. I'm going around my fish. If you get a little bit of green in your fish, don't freak out. Maybe they've got green stripes, you know? Let your art kind of do what your art wants to do. There 
And there is our green water with our three fish in it. So cute. So we want the kind of the surface of the water to be just a little bit yellower. So I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and put it here. And I'm gonna take a little of that light green and just mix it with a little bit more yellow. And that's just gonna lighten it up even more and it'll be a really pretty contrast. <clears throat> even a little bit more. So it kind of shows that surface tension we got going here. Isn't that lovely? Oh, I just love these colors. So like I said, Matisse was in Morocco and he's like, look, life can have color. And he was hanging out with Picasso and they were best buddies. They were, they were rivals, of course, because Picasso, you know, was a bit egotistical and thought he was the greatest. But he actually gave this amazing compliment to Matisse saying, if I wasn't painting the way I paint, I would want to paint like Matisse, mm -hmm. which I think is a really rockin' compliment, especially coming from like an egomaniac like Picasso was. All right. So there's our fish. Now we're gonna keep going with green because we're channeling green. But instead of mixing a green, I'm gonna kind of rinse off my brush, get that light green off of there, give yourself a drink too. And we're gonna go into the straight up green. Doo, 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 doo. And we're gonna do this kind of grassy area over here. So I'm just picking up straight up green on to the side of my canvas and we're gonna do all this area green now I am leaving a little room for a windowsill we're gonna go back and do a windowsill with a little different color but what's nice is because we have this like spring green next to our dark green we have a nice little contrast there ah now I just went over a line that I didn't want to go over. I'm literally going to take my finger and just erase it. Look, it's gone. <laughs> and then I wipe it on a paper towel. Yeah. I know you're probably all laughing that I'm wearing a Home Depot and it says Jacob. My name is not Jacob. My name is Nikki, but this is so the FBI can't really catch me. Just wear other people's <laughs> garments. Yeah, sure, I, th I saw this painting class with someone who looked like her, but said her name was Jacob, so it can't be her. Sorry, Mr. FBI agent. Can't help you. It was a chick named Jacob. All right, so I've got this lovely grassy green with my grassy green. Gonna cover this whole thing. Now, Paint has a texture just like your paintbrush. So you'll notice that as I'm wiping it down, I am leaving streaks. So you wanna make sure your streaks aren't so drastic that it looks like someone just mowed this lawn. We do wanna blend. A lot more people know Matisse because of the stuff he did like way at the end of his life where he started, he stopped working with paints altogether and he started using big sheets of paper and making collages because he was bedridden for like, I think it was like 10 years because of cancer and other ailments. So he started like getting these gigantic pieces of paper that he would like commission to be made giant, bright, colorful pieces of paper. Hi, Ben. And he started just cutting these giant pieces of paper and making collages. And actually those are some of the pieces that you know sold for the most money. This is really popular. This image is really popular because there's so many cat lovers. And he had two cats. I don't remember their names. He had two cats that he included in a lot of his paintings. And Elizabeth, hi! Different Elizabeth? Oh. I assume. No, it's me. All right, so I've got my nice grassy green area here 
all the way over there. Oh, isn't that pretty? Okay, so that's all the green we're gonna do. Now, are you excited? Here we go. We're gonna start moving into blues. <gasps> so excited for blue, I love blue. If at any point I'm going too fast, don't worry about it. We are gonna post this on YouTube and you can pause me and rewind and fast forward and it's fine, don't freak out. But you can kind of see where we're going with this. So I'm gonna give my paintbrush a drink, I'm gonna give myself a drink. Oh, that's refreshing. Here we go. Giving it a drink, giving it a nice dry, making sure it's nice and clean. And then I'm gonna pick up some beautiful blue. Oh, we're going to do the blue sky. Now, you'll see that um, I kind of have a very light diagonal line here. There's like a hill in the background, so I'm gonna kind of draw it right here so you can see it. Ooh. So there's a hill in the background that ends right at the horizon line. That's gonna be kind of a pinkish color, so we're gonna do that later when we're working with accent colors. But right now we're just doing all the big bold colors. All right, so I'm gonna do the line here. Remember I told you about how these flat brushes, if you turn it sideways, you can do detail work. So whenever I do a line, I turn it sideways, I can do a nice crisp line here. And then I can use the broad side to pull the paint. La 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 la. I'm a frustrated singer. I wish I could sing. But I can't, so I won't. Lots of blue, blue sky smiling at me. Now I'm not gonna stop. Now you're gonna be like, I can't watch her anymore. All she does is sing. Thought this was a painting show. I do all the entertaining. I paint, I sing, I dance. Watch me go. All the fun things. My son is gonna be so embarrassed when he sees this. <laughs> but isn't that kind of our job to embarrass our children? I think so. I should get paid for the amount of embarrassment I bring my family. Woo! Beautiful blue sky. got all that. Now we're going to take the same blue and we're going to paint the stool. Not the stool sample. The three-legged stool. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, beautiful colors all working together. Oh, my blue and my green mixed. No! Oh. But notice I don't terribly freak out because it's just a painting. Get some of that green off of there. Now it's blue. All right. So, actually, for the stool, I'm actually going to switch brushes. Because on the stool, we want to make some shapes. So there's two lemons, three, le there's three lemons and an orange. So we're going to make a lemon here. That's almost like a pear shape. Huh? And then an orange here with a little lemon behind it, and then another orange here. Or maybe that's a lemon. I don't know, we'll decide when we paint them because if it's yellow, it's a lemon. If it's orange, it's a strawberry. No, it's an orange. Um, so I'm gonna use my little brush. I'm gonna use my Callista Flockhart. Look at how skinny she is, she's so skinny. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, she's sick. But no, she was just skinny, it's just how she is. Don't judge, we all have body shapes. And mine is nothing like Calista Flockhart's. Okay, so we go around here. Now, I'm going to kind of very carefully go around my glass jar, kind of trace it. Wow, I really am not getting a lot of paint on this brush. If you're finding your paint is too thick, a little drop of water goes a long way to help it spread a little bit. I don't think this brush was wet enough. That actually might have been the issue. 
Oh, much better. There we go. A little bit of water helps a lot. So there we go. Going right up to that edge there. And then I'm going to kind of trace around my lemons and oranges. I need a little more water. 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 Do you remember that Tall Tales? I always said Disney. Disney Tall Tales with Pecos Bill. Water. Remember that? Anybody? Disney Plus? <gasps> I got Disney Plus. Oh my gosh. Talk about living my childhood again. Here we go. Last night we watched The Ugly Dachshund. It's a terrible movie, don't watch it. But I watched it because I remembered it from when I was a kid. We watched The Ample Dumpling Gang. And we watched The Swiss Family Robinson and Davy Crockett and all that kind of crud. And my son is like, can we please just watch a normal movie? And I'm like, no. I want you to see life before cell phones and tablets. Swiss Family Robinson was a lot of fun. But then, of course, because I'm a nerd, I start researching the movie and I found out like all the animals that they used in that movie were not well treated because it was before all of those animal rights laws. And then I was like, meh. I used to like this movie and now I don't like it. We talk about good family fun. Building tree houses. Does anyone even build tree houses anymore? Only if there's Wi-Fi. Is there a Wi-Fi password? Because if there's no Wi-Fi, I'm not going into the treehouse. <laughs> okay, so I'm going around this lemon. I'm going around my lemons and oranges. The reason why we're using this skinny brush, the skinnier brush, is just so that we don't put blue into our oranges and lemons or else they'll look like green and brown and not like delicious fruit. We want delicious fruit. All right, I'm gonna switch back to my wider brush because that's taking too long. Let's go. Here we go. There we go, nice broad strokes, filling it in, getting that edge. beautiful blue. Oh, these colors just make me happy. They're so vibrant and the contrast between them is just so lovely. I love it. Okay. Then we gotta put the legs. She's got legs on her stool sample. I mean stool. <laughs> okay. There's one leg. One. Woohoo. Three. Three legs. You have to have a tripod or else you'll fall over. Who ever heard of a two-legged stool? It doesn't exist. Oh, look, there's red there. I have to put more red there. See that? Oh, if I walked by this painting and I saw the underside, I'd be like, what a lazy painter. Didn't paint the underside. How terrible. So we also need to have these supports here. So we're gonna have a support here and a support here. Beautiful blue. All right, so now I'm seeing, um, I've got a lot more red that I need to put in there to fill in those gaps. So I'm gonna give my paintbrush a nice little drink, give myself a nice little drink. Mmm, slimy. Deliciousness in my painting, in my glass jar. I know you're all wondering about my jar. This is um, an old beet jar because what you got in your jar, I got beets. I got mad beets. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick up some red and fill in those spaces that I missed down here. So like you'll see here, 
I got some gaps. And it comes up to here for the angle. So I don't want to have all that mess. Ooh, lovely, love you. Oh, look at that. I missed this whole part. What a lazy painter. <gasps> no good, rotten. All right. Got you, got you, I got you. Here we go. Making sure my sides are all taken care of. We all looking good? We're all looking good. All right. Here we go. What do we want to do next? I think we want to do some fish. We want to paint the fish. I like the fish. Le poisson. Okay. So the fishy fishes are a lovely orange color. So my paintbrush is getting a drink. I'm getting a drink. And I'm going to pick up some orange. Does anyone know what rhymes with orange? Door hinge. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I know you thought I was going to say nothing rhymes with orange, but it's not true. Door hinge. You just got to say it fast enough. I once was going to eat an orange, but then I got caught on a door hinge. I got bars for days. Here we go. So I make my little goldfish, which I don't know why they're called goldfish. They're not gold, they're orange. I mean, uh, can we just like talk about that for a second? Like, let's have truth in advertisement, shall we? Don't call it a goldfish. It's an orange fish. And why do they call it a clownfish? It doesn't have a red rubber nose. I mean, the fish community needs to get this wrapped up. Lock it up, fish. You don't even know the trauma that you're causing this little lady. All your nonsense about gold, where there's no gold. It's fool's gold is what it is. It's fool's goldfish. All right, calm down, Nikki. You're scaring the children. Okay, so there's a little fish, and there's a little fish. Now, it, I know that they just kind of look like ovals, but it's all gonna come together, I promise, because we're gonna give them little eyes. You can give them a little fin if you want to. You could give them a little fin. A little flare off the back if you really wanna. You can do that. So this is the fun part, okay? We're gonna take our teeny, <coughs> doggy. We're gonna take our teeny tiny Callista Flockhart, teeny tiny, and we're gonna give them a little eyeball. It's gonna be the cutest thing you've ever seen, I promise. Do you wanna see? Oh, it's so cute. We're just gonna like put a little bit of, I want, can you see that? A little bit of white on the tip of my teeny tiny, and we're just gonna give it a little dot, like that, a little dot, like that, and a little dot like that. And you're like, is that it? No, that's not it. Nope. So I'm going to wipe off that white. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I just totally kicked the camera. How about that? I'm going to do the same thing with the black. I'm going to just do a touch of black right on the tip. Now watch this. Towards the front of that little white dot, we just put a dot of black. <gasps> and now it's got an eyeball. Can you believe it? It's so cute. You're so cute, little fish. Hello. This one's not as cute. He's got a funny eyeball. They call him Blinky because he looks funny. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I can't stand it. Love you, little fishies. Okay, so... Now we can start going in and filling in some of these fruits and this kind of bouquet of flowers we got over here. This is where we're gonna start putting a lot of colors on our canvas. Okay, so first things first, let me get some lemons going here. Oh, I picked up blue. Bad thing, bad thing. Don't wanna do a bad thing. 
okay? Smear that in. Hi, puppy. There's a puppy sniffing at me. Hi, puppy. All right. We got my lemon, Mr. Lemon Grab. This is unacceptable. Okay. And then I'm going to do another lemon over here. Lemon, lemon, lemon. Lemon, lemon. And then we've got an orange in front of a lemon. Oh. So we've got to do that little semicircle. And then I'm going to pick up some orange. Give my paintbrush a drink. up a little orange to a little orange right here. So now I got some oranges, we got some lemons. It's all good in the hood. Here we go. Super cute. Okay. So let's start working on this bouquet of flowers over here. So we've got this big white bank over here. We're just going to start putting some ovals, parentheses of colors in there. So let's start with a little yellow. And I'm just going to do like a blob of yellow randomly in that corner. Maybe one over here. Maybe one over here. Then I'm going to rinse. Give yourself a little sip. And then let's do a little blue. I'm going to make my blue a little lighter. No, I don't like it. Just do straight up blue. And then we're going to do blue. Oh, that turned out terribly. Change that back. All right, straight up blue. That's what we want. Who's that? Kathy Zambrano. Hi, girl. Oh, my gosh. It's a reunion. All my friends. All my friends and lovers. No lovers, please. No exes. <laughs> I left my exes in Texas. So I'm doing a little bit of blue. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of green and a little bit of red. We're just doing like a pretty bouquet of flowers. Beautiful. And now some reds. Right about now, my water's getting a little dingy, but if you want to switch out your water now, you totally can. I'll put a little red here. Oh, isn't that pretty? It's such a pretty bouquet of flies. I love it. Bye, fly for the missus. Governor. Where did that come from? I don't even know. Okay. So we've got all these big spaces all kind of figured out now. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a tablecloth over here because I know you've got a little bit of that orange left. So we're just going to do like a diagonal of orange over here. And that's going to be like a tablecloth that's in the corner. And I think we've visited all of our, revisited all of our colors. Okay, and the reason I'm putting that orange on there is because I want to use the rest of that orange. That was a little too yellow for my orange, but that's okay. Because I want to start playing with my orange because we have to build out a frame around our shutters here. So I'm going to take a little bit of red and orange and a touch of green. I know this sounds weird, but I promise it's going to work. It's going to kind of turn into like an orangey brown. So it's like a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, and a little bit of green. It's going to turn into this like rusty kind of brown color. Do you see that? It's kind of like a rusty brown. 
And we're going to use that to create this shutter effect. See how it's kind of a brown color? We're going to do that right along the edge here. And then we're going to do this bar of the window right here. There we go. Now that's like our window frame. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Huh? So the colors I used to make. Good thing she asked. So I took a little of my orange, a little of my red, and a little of my straight up green, my grass green, and I mixed it together, and it turned into like this kind of rusty brown, rusty orangey brown. Kind of color. I didn't want it to be a bright brown. Um, I want it to be kind of like this dark reddish brown to kind of accent with the orange and the red. Is that working out for you? Yeah. Cool. This is like kind of an interesting, we have, you know, we're kind of like live on the internet, but we also have people in studio. All right, so let's talk about that hill in the background because it's bothering me that it's still naked. Nobody likes a naked hill. Nobody? Mm -mm. It's not a thing. Okay, so I'm going to take, in order to make a pretty color for that hill, I'm going to take some orange and some white. Let me see if I like that. That's a little too, it's a little too orange sherbet, so I'm going to add a little more red in it. And that made it a little bit pink. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like it. It's so pretty. So it's like I've mixed orange and white and red, and it became this kind of custardy pink. Oh, isn't that pretty? So that's going to be our hill. Look at you. Oh, la, la. oh, isn't that pretty? Especially next to the green and the blue. Stop it. So cute. Look at that. Love it. I am running my colors right up next to each other. If they overlap just a scotch, that's good, but you don't want too much of an overlap. We are going to be going back and cut. Oh, I picked up blue. Shoot. It's okay. Just wipe it off. Go back. Second coat. Erased my mistake. There's no mistakes. It's just happy little accidents. Loverly. I love it. I love it. Okay. So we're going to go, we're going to do this really fun effect for the wallpaper. I'm rinsing off my my wide brush again, giving myself a little drink. I'm telling you, the more the drinking, the happier the painting. This painting's pretty happy anyway. Okay, so we're gonna do this really cool effect on the wallpaper. So the wallpaper runs from the this line here up. So this is really fun. I think this is a really fun technique. You put half of your paintbrush in the white and the other half of your paintbrush in the blue. So I gotta show you what this looks like on the brush. So you see how that looks? Let's see if I can get that. Jenna sent this. Who? Jenna. She's painting. Oh, Jenna! Oh, great job, Jenna. That's looking awesome. See the kitty cat? So you see how I'm doing this where half of my paintbrush has blue and half of my paintbrush has white? Can you see that? 
Now we're gonna do, we're gonna start making little hearts. Uh, I'm gonna keep the white on the top end. So we're gonna make these like little hearts. And so they have this really cool like faded white effect because what's happening is the paint is mixing on the canvas and it does this really cool effect. So in the original, it looks like these are kind of hearts and flowers. So you could do like a couple hearts and then maybe a flower. But I like to see a contrast between the white and the blue. So if I don't get that real drastic white next to blue, I'll go back and make it happen. But you do you, whatever you want. If you want to do all hearts instead of doing a mixture of hearts and flowers, or I saw one was just like some parentheses like that. As long as you've got that kind of blue and white working together, I could do a leaf. It's kind of cool looking. But you really just want to see the white and the blue mixing together on the canvas like that. Right? So that's really cool. And then you can continue this underneath the window. A little bit over here. Right? So then we kind of have this pattern going around. This wallpaper sort of look, which is really pretty. And then I rinse off. Oh, you can't really see that too well. Here, let me bring it over. There you go. It's a little bit better. This is looking kind of funky. Don't know if I like that too much. There we go, fixed it. If you can't tell, I like to use my fingers a lot with painting. I know I have a brush, but my big old fingers like to do some painting too. There we are, you can see that. All right. So now we've got that, we've got the background. Since we're playing with blue, let's keep going with blue and let's start doing some flowers in this field. These flowers that he have, has over in the green field are kind of funny looking. Um, it's like an oval with two lines. Can you see that? It's like an oval and then two lines coming off of it. And he does that about 10 times. And they don't all have to be in a line. They can be kind of spread out. So like I'll put one here, one here. They can be staggered a little bit. Now we're gonna do it with blue and then we're gonna go back with black and overlap it. So this is kind of like a shadow. All right, that's pretty cool. All right, so we got some stuff in the foreground there. And then I'm gonna switch over to my skinny brush and I'm gonna pick up a little white and I'm gonna make some ovals where we're gonna see some flowers show up in the distance. These little dots these little ovals and make them get gradually smaller as we go back into the horizon because we're going to go back and cover those over with 
some different colors. So it's just gonna be like a field of flowers. So they almost look like little white polka dots, but they'll come together a little bit more. All right, I think we're getting right around to the edge here because the last couple minutes of class, we're gonna be just outlining in black a lot. So I wanna get all the colors on here. So the last thing we wanna do is we wanna do the part of the cat that's kind of covered by the glass. And that's gonna be yellow with a little bit of orange mixed in. So I'm gonna take some yellow and some orange and I just want it to be just a bit darker yellow than what the cat is, just to show a little shadow behind the glass bowl. So it's just a scotch darker behind the glass. You see that? So it's almost like a shadow of the cat because he's behind the glass back there. We still have to do his tail. I didn't forget about the kitty tail. It's okay. It's okay, kitty. I won't forget your tail. Meow. All right. Kitty says it's okay. 